My name is Tom Hedman. I am senior principal scientist here at Spinal Simplicity. Been with the company for about a year and a half. Uh, Spinal Simplicity acquired my previous startup companies that were focused on development of the Intralink technology. And I'm just delighted to be a part of this team. Well, I have to begin by giving credit where credit is due. And uh, the majority of credit uh, at the early stages of this project belonged to our own Adam Rogers and my co-authors on this paper, Jeremy Leisure and Richard Raji. They're the ones that did the heavy lifting, uh, designing the study and conducting the study. The objective of the study was to uh, compare the initial spinal stability provided by the Minuteman intraspinous fixation device with other commonly used posterior fixation devices when combined with a uh, inner body, a, a lateral inner body uh, uh, cage, fixation cage. Uh, this is important because the, the common goal of all of these systems is to minimize motion in the joint to facilitate bony fusion. Uh, the stabi stability comparison is also important because the Minuteman device has two clinically important features. And so you want to compare the Minuteman device to the, the gold standards and see how we stack up with regards to motion constraints in the joint. In this study, there was two experimental protocols that we followed. One was looking at segmental motion um, after fixation with the different constructs. The second was increased foraminal height and maintenance of foraminal height under uh, compressive loading uh, is important because it correlates with the clinical issues uh, surrounding stenosis. So when you can maintain that foraminal height, you can reduce foraminal stenosis. And because there are geometric relationships between foraminal stenosis and canal stenosis, uh, while we didn't measure it, you're also getting an indication of how you are uh, indirectly decompressing in both the canal and in the foramina. Uh, and that's what this is referred to. We're not cutting away bone or disc or ligaments to decompress. And so it's, it's referred to, as you know, as an indirect decompression procedure. So uh, stability outcomes from this study. I would first want to point out that the standalone Minuteman uh, compared very well in terms of establishing stability in the joint in most axes of rotation compared to the, the 360 devices. So I, I do believe that the ability to achieve comparable fixation uh, speaks to the effective and unique design of the Mintman device. The combination of the presence of the, the cylinder of the device uh, between the spinous processes and the deployed extensions creating a compression of the spinous processes is just a good biomechanical design. And the effectiveness of this design is demonstrated in this stability study. Um, the effectiveness is comparable to more posteriorly located or more uh, post posteriorly uh, accessed uh, stabilization devices. Um, and when you go up against the gold standard and you have comparable results, that's a really good thing, especially when you have other clinical advantages to uh, strictly lateral uh, uh, implantation of the device and uh, preservation of the posterior ligamentous complex. There's two unique aspects to the Minuteman device that are advantageous in these type of procedures. When you're doing a lateral lumbar inner body fusion, you're working on the lateral side and if possible, you'd like to avoid the patient repositioning during the surgery. But for these other systems, you have to do a repositioning to gain access uh, to those more posteriorly delivered uh, implant systems. So that's one of the advantages. Uh, the second advantage, of course, is if you're uh, doing this lateral minimally invasive approach, you're protecting the native structures that are providing stability uh, to, to, the, uh, to the joint. 
Uh, in particular, the, uh, the, the supraspinous ligament and the uh, inner spinous, and most of the inner spinous ligament is preserved with the Minuteman. Those combined provide about 36% of resistance to flexion. So if you think stability, forward bending stability of that joint, 36% of that comes from those uh, ligament structures. So it's, uh, it's extremely important to preserve them. They will provide that initial stabilization, pre-fusion, and they will be there continuing to provide stabilization uh, even after you have a fusion construct. The other thing is if you go in and you're disrupting tissues, uh, you're making a trade-off making a trade-off of, of naturally placed and capable tissues that are providing constraints uh, in order to put in your implant to provide constraint. So that trade-off, this study shows, is unnecessary because you can preserve those structures, allow them to continue doing what they do and are meant to do, uh, and add stability with the Minuteman device. Another reason why it's important not to disrupt these native structures is because when you injure them, you will have increased postoperative pain, uh, increased recovery time, and uh, uh, increased likelihood of muscular atrophy. So on top of, of hurting the stabilization of these structures, you're hurting the patient uh, potentially by disrupting these tissues unnecessarily. So yeah, in the paper, we, we refer to the Harden, Harden Brook study where they uh, were one of the first studies that pointed out that there's a difference between interspinous spacers and interspinous fixation devices. And this difference is very important. With interspinous spacers, you are looking to preserve some of the motion and constrain other axes of motion. Uh, whereas with an interspinous fixation device, you're just trying to eliminate all uh, motions because that's going to help uh, accelerate fusion, uh, bring about a greater likelihood of fusion, and it's going to affect fusion in the anterior column. It's going to affect subsidence in the anterior column, and it makes some sense. If you have a, a fixation point that's at a distance away from the anterior column, you are sharing loads and reducing the loads in the anterior column that lead to subsidence. You're also reducing motion uh, additionally so that you're going to accelerate fusion both in the anterior column and in the posterior column. So that's the, the strategy behind a fixation device. With a motion preserving device, I really believe that is came out of the uh, a real thrust to have motion preserving devices in about the late 1990s. And, and I was at the forefront of that, right? I was someone who was uh, looking at intervertebral disc prostheses back in the 1980s. Uh, and, and there is a rationale to try to constrain motion, but allow motion. That's what the native disc does. Um, but as a pioneer in that strategy, I would say that, that motion preserving devices have have not lived up in general to the expectations that we as an industry had uh, for them. While at the same time, uh, fusion constructs have done better and better. And there's been an evolution of fusion constructs, the Minuteman being one of them, uh, where you're finding better and better outcomes, clinical outcomes from fusions. So it's two different strategies, uh, a, a uh, Motion preserving strategy, I think, is probably not the best strategy for a posterior device. I'm not going to discredit it in terms of an anterior device. Um, but I think the, the clinical results suggest that a, a good stable fixation in the posterior is, a, is just a much better construct. And that obviously is the Minuteman strategy. Yeah, I'm not sure anything surprised me, as, but if anything surprised me, it was really on the performance of the standalone Minuteman in comparison to 360 constructs, where you have both anterior column and posterior column fixation. Uh, it really did well in most axes of motion stabilization 
and it did equally well in terms of uh, est uh, establishing an increased foraminal height and maintaining that foraminal height during loading. So I was a bit surprised at how well the standalone device uh, performed. However, uh, probably shouldn't be that surprised if you think about our recent publication in JPR, uh, where we found 93% fusion rate with standalone Minuteman uh, device, uh, which would suggest that you have very good motion constraint from a standalone uh, uh, Minuteman application. So maybe I'm just more impressed than I'm surprised, but that was the, the result that kind of opened up my eyes. In general, uh, when you preserve those posterior ligamentous uh, tissues, the posterior ligamentous complex, uh, you are not just affecting the target level, right? That ligamentous complex is affecting the level above. And so when you preserve that posterior ligamentous complex, you are going to be beneficially protecting the adjacent segment. Whereas if you go in and sacrifice those tissues to put another implant in, you're really not, you're, you're not just potentially hurting the patient and, and, and sacrificing load support at that level, you're also going to be affecting the adjacent segment. So in that sense, the, the Minuteman uh, procedure is important for both the adjacent segment disease as well as the primary uh, problem. You have to have the perspective that a biomechanical study like this is a starting point. Obviously, the clinical data is what's really reflective of how the device performs. But, but with the cadaveric study, you can quantify things like biomechanical fixation. So initial biomechanical fixation is what brings about bony fusion. Uh, so to make this comparison very precisely, uh, one construct after another, after another on the same spine, and you show comparable fixation and stabilization, uh, there's just no question marks left about the effectiveness of this design and its ability to provide comparable stabilization. And so I think that's, that was primary aim. I think that was very much achieved. I think the ability to show the effectiveness of, of uh, indirect uh, uh, foraminal uh, decompression and probably uh, canal decompression uh, based on the, the study by Oliveira in 2010 um, really achieves, I think, the purpose of this study. It's to show this is a very effective device for what you're trying to use it for, standalone and in combination with a lateral uh, lumbar inner body cage.